dismantling evil words, frustrating destiny spiritual. Say dismantle. Say it again. Say dismantle. We have to dismantle the evil words. Please put that scripture up for me. Proverbs 4. My son. He says, my son. You have to be a son to listen. He didn't say my uncle. He said, my son. My son. Give attention to my words. And incline your ear to my sayings. When I say caption, those are sayings. So that's where you, you pay special attention. Say special attention. Not every word deserves the same attention. This world we live in is word activated. Word activated. The Holy Spirit kept saying this to me and let me say it before I forget because I didn't write it down. He said if they do not know how to speak they do not know how to prosper. In the school of prosperity and in the school of spirituality your mouth and your mind are very important. Watch this. You cannot prosper beyond what you say and you cannot prosper beyond what you think Proverbs 23 7 as a man thinketh so is he how do we know what you think we just pay attention to your words if you want to study a man never mind his posture never mind his height never mind his complexion pay attention to his words you become what you say your life follows the direction of your words. Your life follows the direction of your words. So your words give your life direction, positive or negative. Your words. Whose words? Say my words. All right, Romans 1.11, how I long to see you that I may give you some spiritual gift that in the end you may be established. So remember it's the year of double establishment. So what I will say here to, today is what I will give you. Right? And that which I give you will establish you in the end. It is a spiritual gift. Now spiritual gifts are given these are words. So sometimes people struggle because a man of God is just saying something but they want something they can hold. Alright? So what, what is said to you about you or over you affects your destiny. Be it by yourself or by other people. Okay? So pay attention to my words and pay attention to people's words i pay att i listen to my enemies many did not listen to the voice of demons they ignored it and they left the church because demons said so very committed people. Demonic forces said we are removing him from the church. And those words were not vetoed. So they became a law in the realm of the spirit. So they were removed from the church. By demonic words. If you manifest, you better be friends with ushers. And get, I'm, I'm serious, and get spiritual information. What was the spirit world saying? It's not just a demon. It is the spirit world. Some they say, I can't even watch because I was manifesting in that service. And so, you know what? You know, I can't handle that. I, you know, I can't. I can't. Uh, uh, excuse me. You can and you must.
a pastor, a pastor, listen to this daughter, a pastor who used to be my assistant pastor here, his relative manifested on a Tuesday or a Wednesday and said we are going to remove you from this church. By Sunday, I had expelled him. If you want to know what your words look like, look at your life. <laughs> you didn't get that. If you want to know what you've been saying since you were born, look at your life. Many times, believers don't think that what they say matters. It's called speaking capriciously. Like what you say has no consequences. The Bible says by your words you are justified and by your words you are condemned. Can you imagine? So you can bring taps your whole destiny under condemnation with your mouth. It's actually pointless, that's, that's Matthew 12, 37, by your words you are justified, by your words you are condemned. It's actually pointless to pray for someone who speaks negative. Because the impact of that prayer lasts just as long as the prayer. When I stop praying, the impact of the prayer is finished because you start. If I prophesy prosperity on you, and the moment you walk out of here, you are speaking negative and you are speaking poverty. It is the poverty that will happen, not what I prophesied. Because you speak over your life more than me. I don't, I, am, I, am I making it clear? So, you say of yourself what you think of yourself. Okay? Jeremiah, don't say that. Why did he say don't say that? Imagine God said something over Jeremiah and Jeremiah was saying something and uh, something else and God did not say I am God. What I say is what will come to pass. He said don't say that because he knew that what Jeremiah would say would disturb in the spirit what God said. I wonder what it is you are saying over your life. May you say positive things over your life. May you speak things that edify your life. Refuse to say what God did not say. What is a lie? A lie is what God did not say. A lie is not only something that is not the truth. He says you shall know the truth. What is the truth? What God said. You could have no money in your pocket, but that is a lie. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. I, we are not denying what is. We take the truth of the word of God and change what is. So it's more important for me to speak what God said than to accept what I see. Caption. What you accept is established. What, 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 what you accept is established. Okay, you have no money today. Have you accepted it? We know whether you have accepted it or not by what you say. Why are you saying it? And many times we say things so that we attract pity. No, you're not attracting pity. You're attracting poverty. Caption. In, attract, in, in, in trying to attract pity, we are actually attracting poverty. Listen. People don't invest in you because you project poverty or weakness. No, they invest in you because they see anointing and wisdom. So as Africans, we were taught if you bring out your situation so negative, enough people will feel pity for you and invest in you. Listen, when people pity you, they give you coins. You can't build a destiny on coins. But when people see value or anointing, they invest real money. There's no um, that, 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 that.
I hope this is making sense. Ask your neighbor, what are you saying? So we need to discipline ourselves to speak in the direction we want to go. Many speak in the direction of their past. You speak too much according to where you come from. When you should really be speaking according to where you are going. Listen, where you come from is not as important as where you are going. Don't be stuck on the past. Focus on the present. Watch this. Speak into the present and the future. Speak. I always rebuke my sons why I, I do business with. Don't say negative. Listen, your words can cancel your seed. Okay, your seed is supposed to activate prosperity. Am I right? If you speak poverty, you have canceled that seed. Words give the realm of the spirit an assignment. What are you assigning your words to do? Say words. Have an assignment to carry out. Can I prove it to you? Can I prove it to you? Psalm 107 verse 20. <laughs> he sent his word. What is to send? To give an assignment. Hello? So, could it be that you are speaking words that have an assignment to make you poor, but you are hoping to be rich? He sent his words. What word are you sending? And healed them. One word, healed them. He sent one word and it lighted up the whole of Israel. He sent his word and healed them and delivered them. Same word. So you can send a word of deliverance. That's why people can say, man of God, I'm online, but I was delivered. I didn't lay hands on them. Don't be addicted to, to, to the laying on of hands. Be a, be a word addict. A word addict. Not a laying on of hands addict. He sent his word and healed them. So when you speak, you are giving those words an assignment. Listen, you can be described as fat. It's fine. You can be described as a person who is uh, very timid. No problem. You can be described as a person who eats a lot. But don't be described as a person who's quiet. If you are quiet, you are leaving your destiny to chance. Kunyarara. Wakapava, wakanyarara. May that never be said of you. May it never be said of you that you are quiet. Because witches are speaking. That's why I struggle with people who, when I say in church, say this, they are quiet. You are quiet here. Yeah. What about at home? Under supervision, you are quiet. I'm trying to get you to speak into your destiny under supervision and you are quiet. Obviously at home, you are dead. Spiritually. Say I refuse to be quiet. Say I refuse to be quiet. Listen, when someone speaks negative over me, even if they are older than me, respect ceases immediately. I want to say respect when it is the realm of the spirit. Ah. You must learn to object to words said by, watch this, satanic mouthpieces. Write that down. Satanic what? Mouthpieces. Hey, this session is going to change our lives completely. Many of you, your life will change direction. Your life will not change direction by me laying hands on you. It will change direction by you correcting this that we are talking about here. Is somebody in church? He sent his word. Then John 6, 63. What kind of words did he send? The words I speak, I send are spirit. And they are life. So, you, listen, if you don't speak well in the realm of the spirit, you are not spiritual. Even If you don't speak, you are not spiritual. Because it is your words that show us your spirituality. It's there. So the words are spirit. The words are spirit. Watch this. And they are life. So your life consists of your words. Say with me, my life consists of my words. So if I want to change my life, 
I must change my words. May the words you speak, may they be spirit, may they be life. May you not speak death when you should speak life. Not because I said so, but because you are going to change your words. Listen, from this day, if you speak negative, I want you to arrest your words. Before they go far, you run and catch them and say, Hey, I change those words. Uh, and I reassign another word. I will rise. I will prosper. I am not finished. I am the head and not the tail. I will get married and I will stay married. Arrest those words. You can arrest words. It's in your Bible. He says, casting down every thought and every high word that, that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. 2 Corinthians 10, verse 3 to 5. He says, bringing into captivity. So you can capture. Today we arrest. I said, today we arrest every negative word that is on assignment against your destiny. Whether you spoke it knowingly or unknowingly, we arrest it. Say, every word of poverty that I've ever spoken, I arrest those words in the name of Jesus. You negative words in the realm of the spirit, speaking against my destiny. I arrest you today in the name of Jesus. I repent. Lift up your right hand. I repent of speaking negative because of frustration or whatever reason. It's not good enough for me to spoil my future because of what happened in the past. I refuse for those words to carry on their assignment. Their own assignment. There are words that are on an assignment to assassinate your destiny. You better arrest that assassin. Ay, ay, ay. You better ar arrest that disaster. There are words of disaster you have spoken. The problem is you pray in one direction and speak in the opposite. Jesus gave us this mystery, Mark 11. He says, whatsoever things you desire, when you pray, hello, Believe, Mark 11. Believe you receive. And you shall have them. That's when you pray. But in verse number 23 of the same Mark 11, he, he says you will have what you say. You are not praying, but you are saying. Watch this. Oh, thank you, Lord. We thought you'd only have what you pray. You have what you say and what you pray. Uh, you could be praying in one direction, but speaking in the negative. Uh, when you are here in prayer shift, uh, you, you speak positive. Uh, you pray positive. But the moment you get into your car, you say, The hardship we removed in prayer shift, you are reintroducing it into your life, in your car. And the moment you leave prayer shift, uh, things go bingrish. And you are saying, but men of God, these things are not working. Because you are speaking poverty. The words Wakaoma should never be said by you again. Somebody say, never again. Will I say things are hard? Never again will I say things are going down. Even if they are going down, I will not contribute by saying it. You don't change things by saying what is. He says you call those things that be not. So I don't focus on what is. I call what is not into existence. Sometimes I don't have a lot of money and I'll stand here and say me I'm wealthy. You think I have money every day? I'm calling it. You call it into existence. Hallelujah. And the body of Christ, the problem is you think that th speaking to things is crazy. But Jesus did it. In the same Mark 11, Jesus spoke to things. He spoke to a tree. A whole Jesus. Now you are too educated to speak to your money. But your money is speaking to you. Money has wings, 
which means it has ears. Okay, what thing has wings and does not have ears? Say money. Come to me now. Jesus spoke to a tree and he said, if you do not produce fruit, you are going to wither away, wither away and die. Do you hear me? And after a few days, they came back that root and they saw the fig tree had dried up. People who, who, who are proficient in looking after plants, they talk to their plants. And you say, hey, hey, oh, no, oh, no, do yes. But look at their plants. But look at their plants. May your mouth not be used to frustrate your destiny anymore. Thank you, Lord. From today, may you say things that change the situation. Amen. Not things that strengthen a negative situation. Okay. You've been saying, Murumonga no neta. my husband is a problem for the last five years. He has not changed. The more you say it, the more is a problem. And the more you say it. And then you say, you see? You see because you're saying it. You say, ah, do you want me to lie? No. I want you to call a mighty man of David out of that man. Okay. Do me find it is in Corinthians. He speaks of God. Watch this. Who called light out of darkness. So in every dark situation, in that dark situation, you can call light out of. <laughs> For it is God to co who commanded the light to shine out of darkness. You can speak marital bliss out of divorce. Uh, in a divorce court, you can speak marital bliss right there. The problem is you want to call light from light. Call light from darkness. Call prosperity out of poverty. Call blessings out of curses. I said you need to call... Your life does not change by reason of the many services you attend. <laughs> but it changes by reason of changing the many negative words you are speaking. You can attend prayer shift every day. But if you speak negative every day, stop attending. You have been fired. Why are you telling everyone? Why are you announcing? You and your husband fought this morning. Why are you telling us? Number one, we don't want to know. We don't really want to know. In case they don't tell you. Let me help you. Let me get a message from your neighbor to you. They don't really want to know. They are not really interested. And it's none of their business. Can you spare us the details? Number two, it's not helpful in solving your problem. Listen, thank you, Lord. From today when you speak, ask yourself, am I solving the problem with my words or am I strengthening the situation? Why are you saying it? You're, you're, the, the, the gauge of your fuel is telling us they are not paying. Why are you telling us? Tell the realm of the spirit. Tell the realm of the spirit what you want, not what you are seeing. He called light out of darkness. He didn't commentate on the darkness. The, you find this in Genesis. The Bible says it was dark. I'm paraphrasing. This way, the Holy Spirit was hovering over the earth. What did God do? He didn't say, look at darkness. 
He wanted to see light. He didn't talk about the darkness. Stop talking about divorce if you don't want to see it. Whatever you don't want to see, don't talk about it. Stop talking about poverty if you don't want to see it. Because if you say it, you'll see it. If you say it, you'll see it. If you say it, you'll see it. Even if you are right, don't say it. You are so addicted to being right that you commentate negative on your life and the negativity continues. And then you say, because you're addicted to being right, you say, you see, I said it. All my transactions fail last minute. And then another one fails on Tuesday. You say, see, I said it. Do you remember? I told, do you remember? <laughs> so, so your being right is more important than your being justified than you prospering. I refuse for my mouth to cooperate with the agenda of Lucifer. Say what you want to see. Say money. Come to me. Now. You see, so, so the reason why people don't say that is because they are afraid of what people will say. Ah, I know. Are we there? No, let's speak the truth. Do you not like money? Yes, you must like it. Hello? And you must speak it. I want to you one day, one day, marry me, man of God, more anointed than you, but Marindo Indoida, hundred dollars. I mean, I don't need it. See, the, the difference between me and you is you, you want to pretend like you don't want it, you want to secretly want it. Yet, if you are frowning, someone gives you hundred dollars, you smile. Why are you secretly wanting good things? It must be say it, say it, say it. I want to be promoted. Say it, speak it. You don't have to tell your bosses. Tell the realm of the spirit, because your life is the realm of the spirit controlled. God did not speak to the darkness. Why are you talking with the darkness? Why are you talking about the darkness? He said, "Let there be light." And he said, and he saw. Then the next verse, he said, and then he saw. The next verse, he said, and he saw. You want to sow without saying. He called the light, the, the, the light day. Okay, no, no, that's not the one. He said, and he saw. Then God said, let there be light, and there was light. So he said it and saw it. If God created his earth, by saying positive. You want to create your world by saying negative. No break a record. Do you know why people say so much negativity? They want to manipulate people around them into blessing them. Don't manipulate people with money by saying you have no money. Are you listening to what I'm telling you? If you call money, those same people, they will call you with money. Call money from the spirit. Call it from the spirit. Call it from the spirit. Just because I have money doesn't mean you have shares. And I will not say Andina. That's another problem you have. I will not say Andina Mari. Hello? I will not introduce poverty. Just because I don't want to, to give you something. I will tell you I don't want to do it. Why should I then say and namari? That means I now reduce my net worth. No. I will correct you and say that is not how you do things. You go into the realm of the spirit. And you activate what you want. You pray what you want. You seed for what you want. I said that because it is an example of what people think. That is manipulation. May you not be manipulative. Are you hearing what I'm saying? If you are not spiritual, you will soon manipulate people. Because if you are spiritual, they will come by themselves. Hmm. Market your business from the realm of the spirit. By saying, just like all men came to Jesus... I activate that mystery. Jesus did not go to them. Jesus is recorded to go into one person. Made men of God. The rest came to him. How did he do it? When he was in the closet. 
He summoned men. The hearts of kings are in the hand of the Lord. So I talked to God about the hearts of kings. He has in his hand. And I say, Lord, move them in my direction. I speak it. Don't just hope. Speak. Speak. Speak it. Hallelujah. Ask your neighbor, what are you saying? So, there are five levels of words spoken over your destiny. Five. Are you interested? Number one is words you speak over your life. Okay? You've got to change how you speak about yourself. You don't get a guy to marry you by saying, Ah, I'm not going to die in the end. I'm not going Right now, Oh, you don't believe it? That kuna auto traga. Ana time ni tuwa fa not. By the time, why did you buy me chocolate? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't I was about to say something, but let me not say it. Words are powerful. <laughs> so don't look down on yourself. Thank you, Lord. Don't verbalize your insecurities. Don't verbalize it. Jeremiah, don't say, don't say I can't speak. Your assignment is speaking. Can you imagine? God was assigning him to speak, Lord, and you were saying, I can't speak. Moses, Go and speak. Don't say that. Gideon, you are a mighty man of valor. No, I'm small. I come from the smallest tribe. Don't tell us where you come from. We are not interested. Speak where you are going, not where you are coming from. We all come from nonsense. They are an African. Speak where you want to go. Let people laugh today, but let them be surprised tomorrow, for words are creative. So, I want to give you homework. Watch this. You're going to go and, and, and list down every negative thing that you normally say. This one. And then you're going to go and arrest what you normally say in the realm of the spirit, because I promise you it's working. You are going to go and fire all those words. Oh my Lord. How can I save Israel? Indeed my clan is the weakest in Manasseh. And I am the least of my father's house. It's like why are you saying this to me? So sometimes when positive words are said over your life by a man of God, you argue. Because you think he's talking about you in light of your history. If I spoke to you in light of your history, you can't go anywhere. You are going far. I said you are going far. I said you are going very, very far. You go further than your parents. You go further than your brothers and sisters. I said you go further than them. I said you go higher. I said you go stronger. I said you go wealthier. You do great things. I said you will excel. I said you will do well. I speak that over your life in the name of Jesus. Watch this. So you take what I have said as your man of God and you go and re say it at home. Are you catching this thing? This is the faith movement. They speak. While we just focus on tongues, they speak. You will build great businesses. Don't send a kafoyera meds. You will have a lot of money. Don't say I don't have all level meds. Listen, you just need to learn how to count from 1 to 10. Finish. Let's go and you know, 11 is.
Are you getting what I'm telling you? Don't look down on yourself. I refuse to accept what people say negative over me as me. No, you don't know me better than me. It's not being arrogant. It's being spiritual. May you speak spiritual. As the words I speak, they are spirit and they are life. So you speak life into your life. Listen, when you are frustrated, when you are angry, and when you are bored, don't say anything. You won't like what your life will look like after you say what you say out of frustration. And you know, we grew up with parents who threatened us. <laughs> and the threats continued, especially when you started working. And then if you did not line up with what they said, just wanna, just drag. We will share another certificate. A certificate that will not can pay. So they rubbished your education and you were quiet. You were quiet. And now you can't get a job. You think the solution is to get more degrees? No. The solution is to tear down those words and then you post new words in the realm of the spirit. I hope you're catching what I'm telling you. All right? So there are five levels of words. Number one is words that you speak. All right? I've covered that already. Have you spoken to your hair? Your hair was going and you said nothing. When you say nothing, it's assumed you're in agreement. The doctor gave you a report. Your organs are failing. You just said, mm -hmm. Shagoma. You said nothing. When you have a life-threatening sickness in your body and you kept quiet. I refuse to keep quiet. I refuse to keep quiet. You must talk. Speak it. Hallelujah. Don't secretly decide while well, you are quiet. You say you want to marry. Don't just keep quiet and say, hmm. inside. Nah, yeah. You say, I want to marry. Say it. I want to get married. Say it. And you know, oh, thank you, Lord. Why do you repeat what witches said? You can spend the whole day. Can you imagine what they said? My own mother said I will not prosper. That is witchcraft. You, you are not agreeing. I said, when your mother says you will not prosper, that is witchcraft. <laughs> so, how do you counter that witchcraft? There's ignorant witchcraft, which is mothers and fathers saying you will not prosper. It, but it's still witchcraft. So, you need to bring those words down. They will tell you, you've forgotten about us. I didn't forget. How do I call someone I've forgotten about? And then because you don't do what they're saying, they start to curse you. Hey, we curse those curse parental words in the name of Jesus. I said, every parental word of thou shalt not excel because you did not buy BP medication. We curse those words in the name of Jesus. I said, we curse those words in the name of Jesus. Those are called, Psalm 64, verse 1 to 3. They are called bitter words. Bitter words. Look at this. And hear my voice, O God, in my meditation. Preserve my life 
from fear of the enemy. Look at this next verse. He says, hide me from the secret plots of the wicked, from the rebellion of the workers of iniquity. Next verse. That's the key verse. Who sharpen their tongue like a sword. You see that? And bend their bows to shoot their arrows. Bitter words. He tells us the arrows. Bitter words, which are shupika. Bitter words, you will not go far. Bitter words, you will not have a baby. Bitter words, bitter words. Every bitter word. Say it of you. I arrested as your apostle. I said bitter words spoken against you by parental authorities. By reason of a higher anointing, we arrest those words. Psalm 105 verse 19. What about the chest? Oh, was is a gentleman? Yes, he put a chair for us. The suta he took that carapace. Until your word comes, you remain in prison. Find another version that says speaks to what I'm saying. Until what? Your word comes. Say my word. Say my word. Listen, you need to pray for your word. Your word is not your sermon. It is the word that you will speak over your destiny. May you take those things and speak them. What the man of God teaches you here, go and speak it at home. Can I tell you a secret? VID will not get you arrested if you pray in your car. It is possible to, to, to drive and speak. It, listen, don't keep your mouth closed for too long. Your mouth will start to smell, number one. And your destiny will also start to smell. When you wake up in the morning, do you like your breath? Because you were quiet the whole night. Except for those who sleep talk. Don't be quiet. Do you know what we were taught in times past? misbehavior They will find their prayer shift rascal. One will say, hey! The devil! <laughs> is a liar. Don't be quiet! Your boss says, none of you will rise above me. You go in your prayer closet and you reverse those words urgently. You have a negative dream. Immediately go into a fast. Package a sacrifice. You don't need any man of God to give you an envelope. Am I the one who dreamt? You are the one who dreamt. So you are the one who goes and looks for the envelope. There are envelopes. The Asha, just Asha envelope. Hallelujah. So until your word comes, you remain in prison. So you must speak your word. Declare your word. Men shall not live by Nando's alone. But by every word. Taura Shoko. I refuse to be quiet. Psalm 41. They say when will he die? And you say nothing. If you dream of yourself dead and you keep quiet. We will bury you soon. They, the heaven will be surprised. Why? What, what are you doing here? You still had another 30 more years and another five properties to buy. I, I will not die prematurely by reason of being spiritually polite. Don't be polite when someone is speaking against your destiny, even if it is your parent. 
I'm, I'm very serious. Me, I'm radical. Because I know what negative words can do. Negative words have the power to complicate your destiny. Five levels of words. Number one is your own words. Remember. Say my own words. Right? So we're going to correct that. You tear down negative words you have said and then you start to speak positive words. All right? Number two is the words of others. Banana Psalm 3. There are many things my enemies say of me. This one. Psalm 41 verse 5. Put it up there. He says, my enemies speak evil of me. When will he die? When will his business close? When will his church close? Okay? So, words you speak over your life impact your destiny. Negative words spoken by your enemies that you don't bring down, they impact your destiny as well. Did you get that? Okay? Number three, negative words spoken by and on evil altars. So, altars speak evil sacrifices they are effective because they speak can I prove it to you Hebrews 11 verse 4 he says by faith say by faith Abel offered to God a what a more excellent sacrifice than Cain say spiritual competition say spiritual competition Okay? He didn't say by faith Abel offered a sacrifice. No. A more excellent sacrifice. So, in spiritual warfare, there's always a competition between your sacrifice and the sacrifice of your enemies. A more excellent. Um, my sacrifice must be more excellent than satanic sacrifices. Say a more excellent sacrifice. So, you must beat your competitors not only on pricing, but also on sacrifice. Right? Look at what happened. Through which he obtained witness that he was righteous. God testifying of his gifts. Look at me. Look at me. Every sacrifice you give here is examined by God. So God looks at the envelope and he has to testify that it is a sacrifice. If you give and you call it a sacrifice and then God looks and says it's not a sacrifice, he will not testify that it is a sacrifice. So much of what people have given Mahachi is not a sacrifice. They call it sacrifice, but it is not a sacrifice. Why? God did not testify. So a real sacrifice. Hello? Hello? We're talking about altar speaking. Say altar speaking. So we need to shut down my evil altars. Every altar has a voice. Are you getting it? Have you seen when you bring your sacrifice here, I speak? Am I right? So th this, is, this is the voice of the altar speaking. So on negative altars, watch this. The person or the entity that is standing there as the uh, 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 spiritist or the oracle, he speaks. This way. But watch this. The words that I speak here, hello, they don't end when I end speaking. And the words that that spiritist speaks, they don't end when he stops speaking. Do you know, Albert, you're a Bible scholar. When God said, let there be light, the, the real translation of that is, he says, let there be light, 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 For eons, that word light, 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 light has remained there. Because if it shuts down, there's no more light. So when something is spoken from an altar with power and sacrifice, it keeps speaking. Okay, I got four amen, so I need to prove it by scripture. God testifying of his gifts. He died, but God kept testifying. Okay. The word testifying is present continuous. He didn't say God testified. God keeps testifying. 
So your thousand keeps speaking. He keeps testifying. Kune thousand. He keeps testifying. Kune ten thousand. He keeps testifying. So when he approves it as a sacrifice, he keeps testifying. Not testified. And then Cain died. Am I right? After he sacrificed, he died. And he, though being dead, yet speaks. So, your sacrifice that God testifies of will keep speaking beyond your life. What about when you are still alive? If Abel's sacrifice is still testifying to date, it is still speaking. What about you who's alive? So, on satanic altars, watch this, there are negative sacrifices that the oracle there, he looked at as a sacrifice and he had a caucus meeting with Lucifer and they are also testifying. And though the person who gave died, the sacrifice is still speaking. So there are sacrifices from your father's house that are still speaking vengeance. They are still speaking poverty. They are still speaking uh, uh, divorce. They are still speaking calamity. So we need to silence all the voices from evil altars that are still speaking, still speaking, still speaking. I prophesy over your life that every voice voice from every evil altar that is still speaking and is still testifying by reason of the anointing. That voice that is still speaking, we silence by the blood of Jesus. They gave on satanic altars and what they spoke is still speaking. And since they gave more than you, Spiritual competition. Their voice is louder. When I say increase your sacrifice, I'm not fundraising. I want to increase your volume in the realm of the spirit. The realm, listen to me. The, 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 the volume of your prayer in the realm of the spirit is determined by your sacrifice. Okay, you don't believe. So I'll prove it to you by scripture. The Bible says Solomon gave 22,000 bulls and 120,000 ox uh, sheep. And then the Bible says, and God said to Solomon, I have heard your prayer. So before that, what had God done? He had not heard it. Okay, in case you think I'm making up scripture issue. Then God appeared to Solomon by night and said, I have heard your prayer. That means this prayer's voice was heard by heaven because of sacrifice issue. Solomon offered the sacrifice of 22,000 bulls, 120,000 sheep. So King David and all the people dedicated the house of the Lord. Next verse. And God said, I have what? God said what? If your prayers are not being answered, it's because they don't have a backing of sacrifice which gives you voice in the realm of the spirit so could it be that the voice of evil altars is louder than your voice at prayer shift because of sacrifice competition that you are losing i prophesy this sacrifice that will give you a voice did you catch this thing the sacrifice that will give you a voice in the realm of the spirit I summon that sacrifice to come into your hands in the name of Jesus. And may God give you the willingness to put it on the altar with understanding that your voice must be louder. Back to my scripture where they spoke, listen to me, they spoke against Jesus and their voices prevailed. Because their voices were louder. You think they just spoke voices? No. They came together with Judas. 
a man of God. And they gave him a sacrifice. And it gave them a voice. So a sacrifice was required to kill Jesus. Are you getting it? So for, for them to win against you. And for their voice to be louder than yours. In the realm of the spirit. They back it by sacrifice. So believers, we need to be strengthened in the area of sacrifice. So that our voice keeps speaking, keeps speaking, keeps speaking, keeps speaking, keeps speaking. An altar with a genuine sacrifice does not die. I'll prove it by scripture. Abraham reared an altar. <laughs> and he put sacrifices on that altar. Years later, his grandson Jacob, he put his head on the same stone and he said, this is the place the altar was still speaking, was still speaking, was still speaking. And today, Jews who are descendants of Abraham, even if they are not born again, if you get into business with a Jew, you will have unexplainable victory because the altar of Abraham is still speaking, is still speaking, is still speaking. That is the altar that affects the Jewish people. What about the one that affects you as an African? So there is your words... There's the words of your enemies, number two. And then there's the words spoken by evil altars by reason of sacrifice, number three. Number four is the words of your men of God which you believe. Men of God have authority to speak. The Bible says, Isaiah 44, 26, he backs up the words of his servants. The Bible says in Ezra 6 verse 14, they built and finished by the words of the men of God. Words are very important to your destiny. Men of God can send the word and heal people and deliver. Psalm 107 20. 2 Kings chapter number 4 verse 14 to 16. The men of God spoke over the Shunammite woman. He said to uh, by this time next year, she will hold a child. Did it, did it come to pass? According to the word of Elisha. It is the same Elisha who spoke by this time tomorrow. And it happened. May you believe the words of your men of God. May you not be robbed by familiarity. And finally, word number five. Okay, what was number one? Personal word. Words number two? Words of my enemies. This one. Words number three? Words spoken from and by evil altars. Altar in Onswa. Altar, altar. Hear the word of the Lord. This one. Okay. And then number four? The words of my men of God. Say my. Not a man of God. My. My prophet. This way. My man of God. Praise the name of the Lord. He says, no, my Lord. Listen to what she called the man of God. Because she knew that was the voice of God. No, my Lord. Men of God. Do not lie to your maid servant. In other words, it seemed unbelievable. May you believe what seems unbelievable. I said from today, the first day of the week, this is a money week. And number five, the word of God over your life. And that word must be activated by you. John 6, 63, the words I speak, this is Jesus, and Jesus is God, their spirit and their life. Acts 19, verse 20, 
so mightily grew the word of God and prevailed. That word will prevail in your life. I said God's word will prevail in your life. Two more scriptures and I'll close. Psalm 71 verse 21. God said I will increase you. On how many sides? On every side. Say Father, I receive your word of increase. Increase me on every side. Psalm 118 verse 25. Save now I pray, O Lord. Send now prosperity. You've got to speak these scriptures. Activate them. Don't be lazy. A lazy Christian will be a Christian with no results. And finally, second to my last, Genesis 17, because I need this in your life. Verse 6 to 8. Look at this. He says, I will make you exceedingly fruitful. I will make nations, plural, of you, one person. And kings shall come from you. This is the blessing being spoken over Abraham by God, which we see today in the Jewish people. So we who were also connected and Abraham became our father, our father of faith, we need to also connect to that same Abrahamic blessing. So what was promised to the Jews, hello, must also be your portion. Are you getting this thing? You can become as prosperous as a Jew. Just believe what I'm telling you. You can, this thing here can happen if you do what I'm teaching you. May your life signify that you have the blessing of the Lord in your blood. In the name of Jesus. I said may your life signify that you have the blessing of the Lord. Verse 7, quickly. He says, I will establish my covenant between me and you and your descendants after you in their generation for an everlasting covenant to the God you have. Somebody say everlasting covenant. For me and my descendants that will come after me. Next verse. He says, also I will give to you and your descendants after you the land in which you are a stranger that means that you will have a house on the beach in Cape Town that's, how, that's what my vision says a house in Maldives okay let me bring, let me, let, okay, let me bring it down a house in a holiday house in Inyanga amen Are you getting this thing here? So this is God's word over my life. Which is activated by who? By me. Finally, Deuteronomy 28. Say, Lord, make me fruitful. Verse number 8. He says, the Lord will command the blessing on you. Say, I receive it. Say, I receive it for myself. The Lord will command his blessing upon you and your storehouses. And in all to which you set your hands to do, he will bless you in the land in which your father, your God is giving you. Say, Lord, give me that land. Jehovah, give me that land. Verse 9. Say, the Lord, Lord, give me that land. He says, the Lord will establish you as a holy people to himself. He was speaking to the Jewish people. May that be your portion. Just as he has sworn to you, if you keep the commandments of the Lord your God to walk in his ways, verse number 10. This is powerful. Then all peoples of the earth shall see that you are called by the name of the Lord. Does this not sound like Jewish people? Wherever they go, they succeed. You need to connect to that blessing. Connect to that blessing. Say, I connect to that blessing. And the end, they shall be afraid of you. That's why they are afraid to fight them. Verse 11. Are you catching this thing? That's why you see angels flying around there. You see that? And the Lord will grant you plenty of goods. Say plenty of goods. In the fruit of your body, the increase of your livestock, you will not decrease. And the produce of your ground, you will produce results. 
and the land in which your the lord the, your father swore to your fathers to give you every promise god promised you you must be a partaker not a, just a participator i said you must be a partaker in the name of jesus praise be to god stretch your hands to the altar say holy spirit i connect to this word i will change my confessions i will tear down words of negativity i bring them down i annihilate those words they will not work anymore in my life positive words i will release them in the realm of the spirit i am the head i am not the tail i'm above only and i'm not beneath father just as you caused Uzziah to prosper in 2nd Chronicles 26 verse number 5. Cause me to prosper in the name of Jesus. The grace to build and finish in Ezra 6 verse number 14. I received that grace. The commanded blessing in Deuteronomy 28 verse 8 to 11. I received that commanded blessing. Grant me plenty of goods according to Deuteronomy 28 verse number 11. According to Deuteronomy 30, verse number 9, make me bountiful, increase me on every side. May I become rich and wealthy. According to Genesis 30, verse number 43, I receive that word for myself. May I have more than enough like Esau. In the name of Jesus, may the blessing of a thousand times, Deuteronomy 111, I receive that for myself. Like my father Abraham, I will become very rich. According to Genesis 13, verse number 2. May I be the greatest in my domain. Like Job, in Job 1, verse number 3. In the name of Jesus. Stretch your hands. Now I release the blessing upon every seed, every tithe, every kingdom commitment. I release the blessing blessing of the Lord I release it and I declare and I decree even those who participate financially online I command you to operate under a commanded blessing may you be blessed may you be favored and may you be celebrated in the name of Jesus may you be surprised on the marketplace positively surprised in the name of Jesus.